particular. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to point out that the, 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 <laughs> the whole school system. <laughs> We've got on deck Jonathan Tackett. He's, he's warming up. <laughs> Y'all have a good evening. Thank you, Brian, Thanks very much for listening. There you go. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Tackett, FFA alumni scholarships. Jonathan. Well, I appreciate all appreciate you all well, listening to me again. Uh, I printed those off just for y'all to have something to read over. As I've been here before, every time we grow a little bit, we run into a few issues or problems, which is uh, one reason we're here tonight. Uh, two years ago, the uh, ag teacher Ashley Butler uh, decided the two equipment auctions a year were a little too much to handle, one being the fall equipment auction, which was in the month of October, and in that month of October you have the West Virginia um, competitions, national competitions, at that time the pumpkin festival events, and an, equip excuse me, an equipment auction, which was a little bit much to squeeze into 30 days. Um, so the FFA alumni requested that they take over the fall equipment auction and put that put the profit proceeds of that auction towards scholarships for current and past students of her program, um, which we have done. Uh, the year before, the, I guess would have been, now we're in 2015, aren't we? 2013, we raised $1,500 at the fall auction for scholarship funds. 2014, we've raised $4,000 in scholarship funds for students. Um, you'll see in this handout, our first scholarship was presented in 2014, um, and this is where we ran into some of our issues. I was hoping that Birdie would be here today, but I'm, I'm sure that the, the questions can be relayed to her. There are two issues that we run into. The first issue is because these funds were raised on school property, they need to be kept in school funds. At, at the high school, uh, Mr. Schneider's been gracious enough to allow us to have a sister account or a branch account from the Ag Department's main funds and label that nothing but for just scholarships. So they're not included, they're completely separated. What we run into is if you look at the three different scholarships we offer, they're highlighted in bold. Underclassmen scholarships are ninth through 11th graders. These students have the opportunities to participate in CTE programs at school while they're in high school. The problem we run into is those CTE programs sometimes involve purchasing things for that program the people or individuals that are not vendors of the school. And I brought Ashley here in case you have any detailed questions, but an example is, let's say Mr. Curry has a young steer and a student comes to him and says, I want to purchase your steer so I can raise it at the Cabell County Fair. Well, that student would purchase that steer from him, then would keep a record book of all profit losses until they go to that competition at the Cabell County Fair. They would present that, it would be judged, those records are judged, then the steer is judged. Then that steer is auctioned off to businessmen, businesswomen. Well, this scholarship is based on if they compete, they would get awarded that scholarship. They can use that money to purchase that steer or to purchase the feed that they need for that steer to better enable them to be profitable at the end of their competition at the Cabell County Fair. Or other CTE programs other than fair or livestock shows that they have. There's our problem. I think because of school regulations, the school is not able to cut out checks to students because they're not a vendor or 
for other reasons that I'm, I'm not savvy to. That is our issue. And I'll, that one's in the gray area because we've not ran into that problem before, but I can foresee it in the future with how the program is structured. But we have ran into a problem with Mr. Snyder's blessing and the accountant at the high school. We worked out this issue just for this specific time. <coughs> Any student in the FFA that is a paid chapter member that goes through the program or is a paid member for at least a period of a year with a certain GPA qualifies if they can go to continuing education to apply for the collegiate scholarship. We have a student now that's in the process of being an ag teacher, Katie Short, who competed in the scholarship and won. However, Katie's tuition at school, the VU, was already paid for. Her issue was buying books. That was not covered under her scholarship for her tuition. She needed this award to purchase those books. Now, Mr. Wilkinson, you all may know, I can go to Marshall Bookstore and buy $1,500 in books that are brand new off the shelf, or I can find out what books I need and go to another bookstore or online and possibly purchase those books at half price. My request is that the board advise us or help us distinguish on how we can appropriately and generously give these students the money they've been awarded but follow along the guidelines that we're required to when it comes to documentation to such as audits that the school and the board go through. We want to make sure we have all the proper documentation and do this the right way, but we don't want to hinder those students based on the fact that certain you know, state requirements say we have to do it a certain way. Um, even if it comes into play, Mr. Snyder mentioned today, maybe it's simply just that we're calling it a scholarship. And that word brings it in a whole different set of rules. Um, that's what we're requesting is some guidance and some assistance from possibly Bertie or the board on how we can structure this so the next time we have this competition we don't run into the same problem. Okay. From my understanding you're saying that the only way that, that these funds have to go directly to the, the school? That's yeah, like that. Katie Short goes to the WVU, if she wins that scholarship, the Lincoln County High School would have to cut a check right now, as we know it, to WVU uh -huh. tuition. Well, I think this would be you, Mr. Mickey, maybe to give Murray and see if there's some way we could uh, modify the language uh, to do that. That seems like something that would be doable. I would, I would hope so. Like and uh, I wanna, I'd like to let the board know that since we started this scholarship program, we have probably increased attendance in the actual alumni probably by <coughs> six just within the first when we announced it until present day. So this this could potentially grow the whole program dramatically. I can see, you know, that obviously with scholarship money, there's tuition and all those kind of things, but like you say, there's a lot of other miscellaneous things that go along with it. Exactly, and we put in our scholarship requirements that they have to provide us with either a current, um, um, current, uh, what is it? <coughs> Their current grades, the school actually has to send the alumni officially their grades and their average or some type of official document to show that they are enrolled in school. We just don't want to give it out. But we run into that problem if the tuition is paid, if they want this for books, how do we go about that process? Because we need and the undergrad students. There needs to be more flexibility. Obviously, legally, because what if a student gets scholarships from other sources, maybe that pays their tuition on that they need help, and like you say. Exactly. Categories. And the underclassmen, I can see where this could interfere because, I mean, I to the point that they would have to bring, a, say, if we use the steer, for example, a, a receipt of payment and then bring that back and show us that I purchased this for this price and we can keep that in the record so we're better equipped when the audits happen. Are there any other counties give out scholarship like that? If you know, Mr. Curry, to my knowledge, the, the Lincoln County FFA alumni is the only alumni in the state that works with the school system the way we work with you all. Um, Cabell, Cabell County attempted it, 
However, the alumni simply just didn't want to go through the hassle of reporting to the board and having, say, the auction money set in accounts in the board. They they wanted to be independent. They didn't want to work together on this. That's what we found with this whole auditing thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's about just Yeah, I was just going to comment that most other alumni are completely separate from their schools, so their accounts are separate. And we and we have a separate account for funds that we generate off school grants, but we wanted to stay within the requirements and work together. So these auction monies they stay inside the school, and it helps us out that we don't have all this money in our account. I have to keep track of it. Well, that's maybe something we need to run by the state department up there and go for that and see what it is. See what we could do because it may be like <coughs> some, just a matter of changing the title or something to where it gives more flexibility. And we're more well more than willing to do anything we need to to make this thing streamlined for future scholarships. It sounds reasonable and feel, I think we'll, we'll see what we can find out. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, what say are, uh, uh, are we in good stead with the uh, Cabell County Fair? I know they were going to ex exclude their students at one time, at least as far as Well, I don't really know how to answer that. I was in a meeting with the Cabell County Extension Office. Uh, president was the ag teacher, myself, and the fair board president, their FFA teacher. The extension office, and since I'm in this room with all people from this county, everybody in Campbell County wants us out except for the fair board. Um, I know the fair board president very well, and he even told me bluntly that he wanted us out. Um, until he became the fair board president. But I, did, I didn't get a 10 this year. Or Neither did I. Now, did we participate this year? We did participate, but we get a, our students get a lot of negative interaction that's really interfered with participation. I mean, I, I can kind of understand if you go over there and get talk to like some of them have been talked to that they probably don't want to go back. Yeah. The problem that we run into with uh, the act teacher is that the students don't quite know what it takes to put that on. Um, so they just think that we'll have another livestock auction like we have an equipment auction and it'll be over and done with, but it doesn't work like that. Now, Ms. Butler, myself, and the alumni have worked out a five-year exit strategy plan to leave Cabell County. And as of right now, we're on target with that. Um, we're in year two, and they know about this plan. They, it was brought to their attention. I don't think they look for that. They don't want to see that day come because the fair board president informed me that he's worried that if Lincoln County leaves, it will drop their participation down so low that it won't be successful. And uh, we've ran into some problems with the Pumpkin Festival, and that's why Ms. Butler decided this year to step out of that that event. Um, actually, they still have $1,500 that they just decided not to pay us for. And I help, I've helped all the teachers through this, and I don't think any year the Pumpkin Festival was ever profitable over $300. And that's excluding labor, and it was more of a show to kind of get parents involved, but we shifted away from that, and I think when you start passing, you know, out money to students for continuing education, parents are a little bit more excited about that than they are of going over and squeezing cane sorting. So, any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Tapp. Thank you all. Thank you.